Hey guys, Talem here and welcome to the next of my modding how to series and today we are going to cover XCOM released in 2012 by Firaxis. This is one of my most favorite games of all time and it can be modded to be far superior than even the Enemy Within expansion pack also released by Firaxis for XCOM users. So if you've never played XCOM before, it is a real-time strategy alien invasion sci-fi thriller and it is absolutely fantastic it's on a character level it's not on a giant vehicle level although there is sort of um a spaceship combat but not not really in my opinion it's pretty much focused around your XCOM ground units and each of these units are individuals it's just not um one unit isn't representative of, you know, an entire squad. It's just that individual in which you can customize with a name, etc., etc. And it is absolutely fantastic. If you've never played it, but you love everything that I just explained, follow the link down below, buy the game, support for Axis so they can continue to pump out these XCOM games. They've already released XCOM 2, which, you know, it may not have been as good as the first one. I mean, it has a lot of improvements, but that's a whole different topic. But it's still fun. It's still a good game to play. So I, I can still recommend it. And the best part about it all, it can be modded. It can be optimized. And that is a fantastic thing about a game. If a game can't be modded and it can't really be optimized and it's kind of meh, you know, it's kind of a one-shot deal. You play it and then you put it away. But a game like XCOM could be modded to the point to make replayability quite high. And today we're just going to go into all that. We're going to go into how to quickly optimize the game. And then I'm going to show you how to install some basic mods. And then we're going to wrap things up by diving in, which is probably one of the greatest mods for any game ever made. And that would be the Long War mod for XCOM, which takes the game on to an entirely new, unprecedented level. And it is just great. So first, we're going to go ahead and jump into how to quickly optimize your XCOM game for newer machines. Now, this is not if you just have like the... Uh, minimum or the recommended specs of XCOM because you know that is you know four or five years ago I'm talking about 2016 2015 updated machines you know you're running a, a 760 plus NVIDIA video card or it's equivalent of the AMD you know you've got um, a multi-core Intel processor etc etc this is just a quick adjustment that makes the game look fantastic it smooths out the anti-aliasing so you don't have any of the uh the flickering and whatnot going on on corners in your environment so it's awesome so let's go ahead and jump right into that the first thing i need you guys to do is i need you to jump over to the guru of 3d website and we're going to download nvidia inspector it's pretty pretty easy. You just go down here to one of the mirrors and give it a click. And we're going to let it wait and do its thing. The darn internet isn't fast enough, right guys? Never is. Alright, anyway, once it downloads, you're going to open it up and you're going to see these four files here. You're just going to extract these two, whatever the hell you want. If you're a modder or if you're someone that likes to optimize games and you have an NVIDIA video card, the NVIDIA Inspector is absolutely a must-have tool if you don't have it get it you need it learn it love it take it on dates all that other kind of good stuff so let's go ahead now i already have it installed and extracted so i don't need to do it again but once you have it uh extracted and such go ahead and navigate to it here we go nvidia inspector in fact you know what i am going to put on my quick access because i'm always accessing this darn thing once you're at the nvidia inspector folder go ahead and click on the nvidia profile inspector.exe all right and it's open and up here at the top just type in xcom now you're going to have these different options you want this one because this, this is the game we're covering this is the original xcom the one that came out in the 90s this is xcom 2 etc so let's just click on that one all right, now as you see, my settings are already going to be different than yours because the way I have it set up, I have it optimized for XCOM 2 to make it look fantastic. Now, if for some reason you do these settings and the game just runs terribly, there's something in your system that isn't liking it for some bizarre reason, 
either the gear is too old you're just going to go ahead and click this to restore back to default and you're just going to have to deal with the in-game settings to adjust uh, your game so what i did is inside xcom i set everything in the graphics setting to high i set my resolution the way i wanted it to and i put the graphics and all that other stuff to as high as it will go which is the high setting so once that is done you know here i am in inspector what you need to do is you need to change the anti-aliasing compatibility to be this number right here the 0x000100 c5 that's the bit that's compatible <coughs> excuse me that's compatible with xcom and then after that you're going to scroll down here and under anti-aliasing you're going to set it just like this now, some of you may be thinking well 4x isn't that a little low no it's not because we have the sparse grid super sampling enabled which of course is SGSSAA kind of a mouthful but <laughs> it's the best anti-aliasing out there it is intensive if your machine isn't uh, so much more dominant than the game's uh, recommended settings but it looks amazing and for XCOM with modern machines it's, XCOM will run just fine and here in texture filtering, go ahead and set it just like I have here. And it's the same with common. And once you have all that set up, just go ahead and click on apply changes. And you can close this out. And then real quick, I'm going to go ahead and load XCOM just to uh, take a quick look at it. Now forgive me if you hear any kind of sound of a fan in the background while I talk. It is 100 degrees here today and it is hot and if I don't have it on, I will lose all my body weight and sweat. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, as you can see here, the game looks amazing. If you look at the railing and the stairways in the distance, you can see that there is no longer any form of flickering. The game is completely 100% smooth and this is the way you want it now if you did not have these those changes done and you would be at this main menu you would see the anti-aliasing flicker along the thin railing and over here on the stairs especially and this will show everywhere else in the game where those uh, transparency edges are present so this is a way to get rid of those it looks fantastic it's a performance hit, but if with stronger machines, you won't notice a darn thing. You'll still be running at a very smooth frame rate. So yeah, that's all you need to do just to quickly optimize XCOM. All right, so we've taken a look of how to optimize XCOM. And now you're probably maybe wondering, how do you install a mod for the game itself? Well, guys, it can be pretty easy. XCOM can be as simple as editing an INI file to having a program edit it for you. And essentially, XCOM is a series of INI files. Almost everything you can mod in the game outside of the little graphics changes is done through INI file changes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. But you're going to need, at least I highly recommend, that you download the following program. It was found on the Nexus and it is the UPK Utilities. And it is probably one of your biggest friends when it comes to modding XCOM. Now we are going to download the Patcher GUI 7.3. So go ahead and click download manually. And once it's done, go ahead and crack her open. You can go ahead and close this if you want. But I do suggest giving it a peruse, reading it, and make sure to come back and endorse. This is very important. So you just click that little button and you're done. All right, so give this a close. We're here at the Patcher GUI and just extract that to somewhere on your computer. For me, I put all my game utilities in my game utilities folder under the appropriate game name. So I will hop on over to my XCOM utilities folder and there it is, Patcher GUI. Alright guys, so what I need you to do is go ahead and just click on the Patcher GUI folder and click on PatcherGUI.exe. Now once you're in here, you need to make sure that your path here is directly into your XCON Enemy Unknown XEW folder. 
This is for Enemy Within, which most mods are designed around, including Long War. If you want to just play the Enemy Unknown version, it's kind of XCOM Lite. It's the original release without all the cool changes. You can, but... I would really recommend just jumping right into Enemy Within. It has much more flavor. It tells the same story, just it has the additional enhancements which make the XCOM game complete. So for the purpose of this tutorial video, we're going to focus on Enemy Within and not Enemy Unknown. So just make sure uh, this tool here is correct. And if you want to, you can go ahead and kind of look at this stuff here. But it's not really something that you need to uh, worry about. You know, you just make sure all these are correct, which should all be pretty much in your game utilities wherever you extracted the patcher GUI. All right, so that's everything for the UPK patcher, at least on the presentation side. And now we're gonna get into actually modding XCOM. We're gonna start simple, just to give you guys kind of, uh, get your toes wet in modding the game before we jump into the more detailed Long War mod. So let's go ahead and go to this site. It is a great website, uh, mod page. It is probably one of the best mod collections available for XCOM. And it has a lot of tweaks that can be used with Long War as well. So what you want to do here is, um, Take a look at everything that this um, site offers. I mean, it, it offers a ton of stuff. Interface tweaks, tweaks to the mechanics in the game. It, it I use just about everything on here that I can in conjunction with Long War. It's amazing. The camera tweaks are a godsend considering the default XCOM camera is enraging at times. <laughs> it just, it's the weakness of the game is its camera. Everything else is fantastic, but the default camera is rage inducing so we're, we're just going to go ahead and go under files here and we're just going to pick one of these to make an example of so let's go ahead and just kind of scroll down here what would be a good one to choose mm -hmm. here we go why don't we choose no sleeveless armor for enemy within as you can see some of these say e eu some say EW, and other words say EU and EW. That means that this particular mod is just for Enemy Within, this one is just for Enemy Unknown, and this one works on both. One thing I want you to pay attention to before we click on that file is under the description, it'll tell you which mods can be used with Long War. If it's not listed here, do not install the mod from this page. That is because Long War either already does what that mod would do, or it does it differently. So you would have some serious problems with uh, that part of the game if you tried to mix and match like that. So don't do not do it. If you're going to use Long War, which I absolutely suggest that you do, if this is your first time through uh, XCOM, maybe not because Long War is much harder, but not in the sense where it's just making everything bullet sponges and higher damage, which is a very cheap way of increasing difficulty. But there's much more elements to it than that, that are all moddable, by the way, that make Long War a superior version of the game, which the game developers have admitted to. They pretty much said that their game is nothing but a tutorial for the Long War, so bear that in mind. So we're going to go ahead, and uh, with that out of the way, we're going to go back down here, find uh, the mod I was talking about which was no sleeves for EW go ahead and click on download manually continue with my download yes and once Nexus wakes up there you go you can go ahead and open it up and it's basically a text file that's it you're probably wondering well, how is the text file gonna help me do I have to read the instructions well actually no you don't just extract it and I like to pop all these text files into a location relevant to the game that I am installing. So I'm going to install it into a mods folder that I made within the XCOM uh, game utilities folder where I also extracted patch GUI just to kind of keep everything together and click on OK. And there you go, it is extracted. So for now we can go ahead and close this. 
because when I do my long war setup, I will be coming back to you. So let's close this here, and we're back here at our patcher. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to browse on the second line here, and we are going to browse up and up to oops, not that far up to the mods folder. Click on the no sleeveless armor dot text. Click on open. And as you can see here, it lists the text file within the main window. You can actually edit it and save it or save it as the change it if you want. And this will show you all the changes that this particular text file is going to make to the game. Now, a lot of this may be rigmarole for most of you. In fact, uh, I don't understand all of it absolutely completely. So that's that's a moot point for, for XCOM. For what we're doing, you don't need to too much worry about it. And we're just going to go ahead and click apply. It'll do its little thing. And packs to bloop, 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 and patched successfully. So let's click on OK. And that's it. Now your guys' armor will all have sleeves. They won't look like they're now members of the Merchant Marines. Let's go ahead and close this. And that is how you do a basic mod install for XCOM the game. Now there are other mods that may require a few more little steps, but that's really something that you can read on the mod page itself. And now ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into the main reason why I'm doing this video, and that is to encourage all of you to play XCOM Long War. It is exactly how it sounds, it is a very long, tumultuous, painful, yeah, it's exciting war <laughs> and it really makes the game feel like this massive worldwide invasion. I mean, it just offers so many features, which we are going to go into right now. All right, guys, here we are on our desktop and we are about to install the Long War mod. So let's go ahead and I'm going to drag the lawn, the, the lawn war. There we go. War of the lawn mowers the long war mod page on the nexus so before we get into all this down here just real quick go to files and just download this one right here if you have pc and this one if you have mac or linux yes it's this supports linux so a lot of you guys that use linux can cheer because it is a great operating system do not worry about the optional files here just go ahead and focus on this one right there I believe I've already downloaded it. Let me make sure so I don't sound like a complete chode here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Actually, I didn't. See? Huh? Huh? Let's go ahead and start the download. Ooh, I just burp breakfast. <laughs> I know, sexy. All right, he he let's uh, peruse a little bit about the long war. It has its own series of voice actors because it adds a whole bunch of extra accents and languages to the game itself. So you can really diversify your soldiers up to make it f have a more international appeal to the game. But of course you imagine in a united front like this there would have to be a common language spoken for communication's sake. And to admit it, it probably would be English. Just saying. It's a worldwide thing. All right, now on the features, if you go ahead and peruse this right here, you will see all the additions that Long War makes to the XCOM game. And it adds new classes. It just really spruce up just about every factor of the game. This is a complete overhaul that changes the mechanics, the way the aliens think. The soldiers, you know, how you level them up, how you tweak their classes. Every particular class has, you know, two or three different styles of how you can uh, have their skills set up. You now, you could have uh, your heavy gunners, you know, you can have your stationary, or, you know, massive cannon Gatling heavy gunners, or you can have your much more agile attack gunners. You can have your gunners that are designed specifically to pierce armor and to handle mechanical enemies you can have your rocketeers that are our bait to you know strike heavy um troopers from far away i mean it's it's very cool how you can customize this game and it, it's awesome plus you know it's just um 
it, ma it makes it more fun because not only is it just more challenging, but it just seems like you have so many more options to counter, you know, the game's uh, mechanics. It just, it just, I love a game that uh, allows you choices, and XCOM Long War definitely integrates a whole bunch of choices into XCOM itself. Um, it gives you a little rundown on the installation, which I do suggest you all read this. Even if you just watch my video, it's always good to read it because if you see it and you read it, your ability to, you know, your, your retention of it is going to be much, much higher. So what we're going to do is just leave it here at the installation page real quick. And we're going to go ahead and just click on the Long War Executable. And this would be relatively quick and easy. Now right here, this is asking you where your Long War game folder is. And by default, it's going to list where Steam is installed by default and where the game would be installed by default. If yours is here, then that's fine. But if you're like me and you put it somewhere better because the program file is probably the worst place to ever install a game, just saying. <laughs> you want to navigate to where your game actually is. So let's go ahead and jump all in here. Da, da, da. And we got our XCOM Any Man Know It, and we got our EW folder, click on OK. Now if this should work, right? Click Next. Make sure this is to the appropriate language for you. Of course, if you're listening to me, I'm assuming it's English, but hey, you never know. Click Next. Make sure all this appears right, and then click Install. But you get this here saying that it does not exist. That's because automatically Long War looks for the enemy within mod. So we're just going to abort. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that when you set the path that you set it like this. Because that is probably the single most common mistake done in the installation of Long War is that right there. I know I've done it initially myself. When I was first doing it, I was like, what am I What am I doing wrong? Why isn't it working? Well, that was why I was working. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go over to your, remember, if I can find it, to your Long War, I mean, to your XCOM folder. Just click on OK. Don't click on XEW because it's effectively going to do it for you. Then click Next. If you get this little pop-up, click Yes. Click Next and Install. And there you go. That is how you properly install long war so we're gonna go ahead and let it finish it should be relatively quick bah, bah, bah. you can view the readme if you want i don't need it but you know if it's your first time it's on long war go ahead and give the readme a peruse and click finish all right and at this point guys we can go ahead and just um start up xcom so you can kind of see the difference Go ahead and choose the enemy within, and that's the um, XCOM enemy unknown because Long War will not work under EU. Alright, now when you first, if you notice now, my graphics are crappy. That's because when you install Long War, it kind of resets all your settings. So you kind of got to go into here, go into here, and put everything back. To how you want it. I don't know why he does this, but for some reason, for me, it does it. And there you go. Everything now is back the way it's supposed to look, which is fantastic. As you can see here, it's now called Long War instead of just starting the single player game. So if you click on Long War, the difficulties are changed. Now, if this is your first time playing Long War and you don't mind replaying this game multiple times because you like different challenges you can just go right for a classic i find the impossible to be the best setting because i make some tweaks that make impossible better in my opinion not necessarily everybody else but just for me so i'm going to leave it on impossible now under advanced options you know you have different settings here the tutorial and all that stuff is disabled for uh impossible but make sure if you have the dlcs that these are checked there's also iron man which I personally don't enjoy. I don't use Iron Man because that just risks if the game has a problem and bombs out, then, you know, 
You're screwed. But let's go in the second wave. As you can see, X, uh, Long War has just a titanic amount of second wave options. So what we got here is we got damage roulette. Basically, it makes your weapons have a wider range of damage. So say typically you have a blaster rifle and let's just say it has a damage of 5. When you hit, pretty much you're going to do 5 sands in any variations in shielding or weapons or armor or, or whatnot. But what damage roulette does is it changes that five to say be three to six so you can potentially do more or you can potentially do less i like that option i like the fact that not every hit hits for the exact same amount because when you do it that way you're basically just playing you know a math game because you know okay let me see this guy's got four health left so i got a weapon that does three so i need to make sure i hit it with this guy and this guy it's that's just that's too much math for me when i play a game <laughs> It's bad enough I gotta count the little health pips. Anyway, and moving on, we got stuff here called uh, Strict Screening. Uh, rookie stats are fixed at averages of the typical ranges. I don't use this. I like my rookies to have a wide variety. I like having guys that end up being super awesome. And then you also have guys that are just not. But I, I like that variety because, you, you know, in Long War, especially when the death toll is so generally high, I like having to sometimes rely on the underdog to pull off the mission, and they can. Believe me, it's all up to your noggin. Uh, training Roulette is another excellent, excellent tool. It kind of makes when you level up that the uh, the training tree will be partially randomized. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this. I don't often use this myself either, but if that's something that sounds good to you, then hey, knock yourself out. Red Fog is an, uh, another awesome one. Anyone who's taken in combat will grade a unit's aim and mobility. This also applies to aliens. This is why I use this. If Red Fog just applied to myself or just aliens, I wouldn't use it. But I like it when you and the other side have to play by the same rules generally. I do not like games when they cripple the player. That's usually the result of their AI suck. Their AI sucks donkey nuts. So, <laughs> Liberators, another one that I play with every single time, is in the original XCOM, if you a country dropped out, which during Alien Invasion, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they did, given that how today's media circus works. <laughs> but what this does, this allows you to retake those countries back, which is awesome. You know, you go in with your troop, you got to take down a facility. And you gain that country back into the XCOM folds. And I always felt that that was a huge fix of a flaw of the main game. Results driven. That basically, if you don't do enough to appease a particular country, if they don't like your uh, ability to control their panic, then they're going to give you less money. You know, it's, if you want to add that extra challenge into your game, good but it's, it's not a bad option but it makes sometimes money much harder because controlling panic in long war is an up and down process and it can be challenging uh diminishing returns the cost of satellite increases with everyone that is built i don't particularly like this one because you already have to have more uh uplinks to contact these satellites and it just seems like an unnecessary money sink to make every particular satellite after one after the other cost more money i i think it's it's an unnecessarily unnecessary addition so i would not personally play with diminishing returns but if you want to you know like everything else go ahead issue trigger tentacle i always play with this one uh bronze man mode this is something that uh it's right here, allows restart of tactical missions via the pause menu in iron man mode so if you're in iron man mode and you're playing a mission and the mission is just going to crap you can just hit exit and restart the mission and you'll start the mission again from the top so that's actually a really good option if you play with iron man that is the one to choose because there are a lot of points in the time when something just goes so boneheadedly wrong that you don't feel like wasting your entire game. I, I don't consider this a cheat. I consider it just, you know, kind of a do-over. But it's up to you. If you want to take this, cool. If not, if you want to go like the hard, 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 hardcore, insanely have a, too much time on your hands Iron Man mode, then go ahead and not choose this one. Commander's Choice, something everybody should pick. This allows you to decide what class your soldier will be. 
dumbfounds me that this was not in the base game. <laughs> that's that's a you think that was a choice they would give players, not just have it automatically done, done for them. You know, this will allow you to have like your genetically modified soldiers can't be psi operatives either. I don't generally pick this, is because I kind of like the idea of having you know genetically enhanced super mental soldiers. I mean, it takes time to get that, so why not, right? You know, you got durability, you know, items never need repaired because in Long War, items take damage through a veritable different things. You know, people get injured in combat or they get killed, the items could be damaged. So, if you don't like the idea of having to repair your gear, just check this and you don't have to worry about it. The Friendly Skies, I typically pick this one. It's because Long War by default makes your flying ships insanely bad shots i don't know why but this is just that's just one thing i this seems the friendly sky seems to balance it out you know i've had successes and failures but without this it seems like failure happens all the time and i don't like that fact i like to at least know that i have a chance without wanting to injure action figures on my desk <laughs> You know, miracle workers, you know, repairing items cost no resources, only time. This is if you like the idea of the repair game, but you don't want to have to do all that extra resources just to repair your gun. This takes that away, but just puts in the time factor, which can be which can be a good compromise between the default repair and just having durability enabled. Green fog is the XCOM soldier's aim will degrade after each turn in combat. I don't like this because it does not affect the aliens, as far as I know. And because of that fact, I will not use this. Also, a trained soldier isn't going to get a worse shot after every round. In my opinion, Green Fog is just throwing yourself hurdles for no other reason other than to do so. It's just another one of those choices that I don't agree with. I will never use ever. New Economy, it randomizes the money that uh, the different countries give you. So you could get squat from the United States, the richest country in the world, where all of a sudden some country in Africa will give you the most. I know, that's not overly realistic, but it's funny. It's fun. It, the unknown factor is uh, kind of if you like one of those people that like the unknown factor, where you know you're into those uh, plastic junk box mystery boxes, and uh, you just like having little surprises. Then you know maybe that'll be for you something that's uh, you know unexpected. Hidden potential, absolutely vital. This will have your soldiers level up in various different ways and uh, amounts for their different stats. So I would always go with hidden potential. Save scum, if you're one of those people, because in, in XCOM, if you perform the exact same action, it's going to have the same results whether you reload the save over and over and over. What save scum does is it allow those randomization effects to be re-enabled. So basically, if you have safe scum enabled and you shoot a guy, you know, it's a vital shot and you miss and you get pissed off, so you restart the game. If you don't have safe scum enabled and you take the shot again, you're going to have the exact same result. But with safe scum enabled, if you reload the game, all that is reset and the game will generate the result again, which could have you hit. So some people like that better. Um, I'm kind of indifferent about it. I may or may not use this. I don't know. I don't save scum all that much. But I always like the option if for some reason nothing I do seems to work. I like the option to be able to change it up. But that usually involves changing your tactics, not changing the code in the game. So this is just to make your life easier if for some reason you're just having a really hard time. Alright, absolutely critical. Just changes the bonus for flanking shots. This again just makes uh things more difficult for you but i believe this also affects the aliens as well dynamic war is to make long war shorter if it's just too damn long for you i don't recommend doing this because you kind of you don't get the full effect of what long war offers you uh cinematic mode just makes it so you're more accurate this is for people that uh, want to try long war but want a little bit of an edge because by default, the aliens in Long War on Impossible have perks and bonuses that your soldiers do not. So, this goes a long way in maybe helping to balance that out. 
because I'm all about game balance. I like combat to be quick and, quick and fierce. If I find something that's just a bullet sponge, it's so boring for me. That's one of my big problems with like Bethesda games by default. That's why I'm so glad when AI and combat overhauls come into effect. That made combat fast, fun, and furious. Like sex should be. No, I'm kidding. Maybe. All right, wear and tear. Items carried by soldiers will sometimes wear out after missions and require repair, even if the soldier isn't injured. Now, if you have this enabled, if you enable certain ones of these, where's it at? Burr, burr, burr. Like your ability, it will override the wear and tear option, making this moot. So just keep that in mind. All right, total loss. Sometimes you lose gear from soldiers who die in combat. Makes sense, right? If they die, their chances are their armor has a big old hole in it, or their weapon got destroyed. So this is another way to help you be very careful in combat, because it's just not the soldier's life that's at risk; it's also their loot. So yeah, gotta protect that loot, right? <laughs> uh, aiming angles: they receive aim bo aiming bonuses the closer they are to flanking. Uh, hidden trees: you cannot see their perk options until they level up. This kind of limits your ability to pre-plan for your guy, but it also enables some surprises if you if you like that. So that's really up to you. United Humanity Exalt are inactive. I don't ever use this because I like the Exalt subplot because I would believe if they're an alien invasion, there would be sects that would be working against the government for their own interest, whatever those may be. You never know. Just the idea of a United Humanity. For this kind of scenario, at least at this point in time of our development, it doesn't seem too likely. Alright right, guys, I just don't. We still argue, argue over nonsense. Alright, we are Legion. Start with two squad size increased already developed. So instead of the starting four, you could have, I believe, eight. Right off from the start. Which is pretty fun, I'll admit. I'm not going to lie about it. But that's really up to you if you want to start with four or do you want to jump right into having a larger squad size. Really up to you. There are some nice options here to make Long War impossible. Much more manageable. Alright, quick and dirty. Many missions will have few aliens overall. Alright, what this would do is basically push less aliens on the map. But with that, remember, it means less experience for your soldiers. Which means you will level up slower. But it will not have... It won't make those missions drag on where you're just fighting waves and waves and waves. But some people like that. But others like it quick and dirty. Just saying. <laughs> Alright, Recon. You can see milk cans and bomb nodes in the fog. Now, I'm kind of torn on this. I honestly believe that those nodes and stuff are out there in the open. That our ship's scanners and stuff will be able to locate these on the drop. So I often use Recon, especially considering a lot of these canisters and whatnot have timers on them so it's really up to you some people say hey you know that's just cheating but other people say hey you know what? i don't want to waste my time and make the game just unnecessarily that much harder but it's really up to you plenty of options here to tweak the game how you want it all right with that being done i'm going to go ahead and just exit out of here because we've gone over through all the options now if you are jumping into XCOM long war i'm telling you my friends you're about to have a lot of fun and I hope you don't get angry pretty easily because this game will teach you patience it's a good game to learn patience on if you don't have children this is the game that'll teach you patience <laughs> all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys a few tweaks that I do in the I and I files to long war to make it more enjoyable for me and maybe even for you Okay, now we're going to jump into the few changes that I make for Long War, and I'll explain to you why I make these changes. But if you don't want to make them, you don't got to make them. Just saying. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the XCOM folder. So go ahead and zip on over to it. You're going to go to XEW. You're going to jump to XCOM Game. And then to Config. Yes, it is a lot of folder jumps. And what we're going to do is we're going to open the default game core dot I and I. Let me drag it onto the right screen. All right. Now, as you can see here, there's a whole list of various different stuff and all this you can't actually modify. 
But before we go into those generalities, I'm going to show you some of the changes that I make. And then I'll do an explanation briefly of this kind of crap. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and go to search and find. And I already got the first one typed in. It's CB Expert Bonus. Now, these particular titles here are not necessarily going to reflect what they actually do. That's because these are settings that the long war creators use to make the necessary adjustments to other areas of the game. So what this does is that it's the percent of the normal build time an item takes to repair. So what this is, is that say like it takes 10 days to build a gun. With this setting, it will take 80% of those 10 days, 8 days, just to repair the damn thing. And I'm sorry guys, say an automobile for example, it takes quite a while to build an automobile from scratch. To form the metal, the materials, to put it all together, etc, etc, etc. It does not take nearly as long to fix the darn car. Okay, unless it exploded into tiny little penny side shards. In that case, you just get a new car. So, waiting 80% of that time for repair, if you use the repair method in the game, in my opinion, is doesn't make sense. It is way, way too high. And again, it is an unnecessary obstacle just flung into the game for the sake of making it harder. I don't think it's a good setting to have it even remotely that high. At best, I'm thinking 25% of the build time and that is saying a lot because really it doesn't take even 25% of the time to build something but just for the sake of the game I'm going to leave this at 25 because I, I feel it's a fair balance amount of time for repairing an item and while we're on the topic of repair let's go ahead and search for the next thing which is interceptor repair hours there you go the hours it takes to repair an interceptor with 100% damage. Now, this, of course, scales based on the amount of damage um, an interceptor have. But basically, it takes 600 hours, which is 25 days, to repair an interceptor that has been more or less completely damaged. That is an absolute huge amount of time. I don't particularly feel that it should take 25 days to repair an interceptor so the settings I normally change it to is 288 which is around 12 days I feel that's a pretty good balance between getting the interceptors up and running because the air game in long war by default is, is it's it's pretty bad in my opinion I think it's the only one of the only weak points of long war is the tweaks to the air game in my opinion aren't that great but fortunately they can be changed <laughs> This isn't a criticism derailing my love for Long War, but it's just the one thing about it I don't really care for. And the other thing is the Interceptor rearm hours right below it. This is how long it takes to snap that new missile launcher or that new energy cannon to your Interceptor. Now, this is a long time, guys. This is 168 hours. And if we went ahead and went to our little calculator here, and 168 divided by 24, that's seven days, uh, a week, to get that weapon on your interceptor. And during that week, the interceptor's not available. That is a long time, especially when you got all these engineers, you got people really on the move to get this installed. I don't think seven days is a good amount of time. So I always play with this at 72, three days. I believe that's a good amount of time for a weapon to be installed and ready to go in an interceptor. Because during alien invasion, three days is a long time than I have your flying ship. So, I stick with 72. You don't like it? Oh well, don't put yours at 72. <laughs> Alright, and another little change that I like to make here in uh, base days injured. This is how many max hours your soldier can be injured. Look at this. 1,320 now, I may be wrong here with my math, but that is well over two months, I think. Divided by 24, yeah, 55 days. That's almost two months that your soldier could be out. I mean, 
come on, it doesn't take that long to turn a regular guy into a, a, a mech in the game. So why would somebody that's recovering with advanced medical technology be out for two months? It's, in, it's an insane amount of time. So I personally like to chop this down to 768. Which, of course, is about 32 days, which is still a lot of time, but I think it's a more balanced amount of days for me. I think 32 days is still a long time, but hey, you know, some people get really injured. They need time to rest and get ready. You know, you can rely on other soldiers. I understand that this is so you don't focus on one particular set of soldiers, but that's also where the fatigue system comes in. All right, and one, a couple more changes here. Let's go to search and do, 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 do. Let's look for UFO fusion survive. All right, this is the permanent loss of your will when a soldier is critically wounded. Five is too high. I mean, that's, that is a lot. I believe it should be about two at the most. That's because this the will is not recoverable. Now, XCOM 2 kind of addressed this and fixed it where they just had that temporarily, temporary lost to their uh, stability as it was until they went on a mission and survived it without any, in, any injuries and it kind of restores their faith. But in XCOM, that isn't available. Here it's just a hard set raw loss that you don't get back at all. That, that particular gain is gone forever. And I don't really like it that much. In fact, I would even go as far as to put this down to zero. But that's really up to you guys how you want to do it. I usually keep it on two, but heck, I might throw it down to zero because I don't believe that there's nothing that most people can't come back from. Some things would be hard to imagine coming back from, but, you know, I believe many people have the ability to, under the right circumstances, to come back from even the most traumatic experiences. All right, and the final one, which is one of the biggies for me, um, I was very unhappy with this setting and that's panic terror country the reason being is say like you go on a rescue mission to save the civilians and you win you're you're victorious but, but unfortunately about five of them died it completely makes your victory moot because this terror per country it increases the pan panic per civilian killed and when on impossible especially when these civilians are dying left and right even if you're victorious even if you rescue the amount and you kill all the aliens secure the area the panic in the country is going to be just as bad or worse than it was if you just left say screw it we're out of here oh, too many aliens let's get out of here and you failed now it won't affect the entire continent but the damage done to that country will be far higher than it would have been if you had just left. So I don't like it. I think it's a, this was a really bad thing to, to have into the game. So I always put it at flat zero. I mean, if I get in there and I do the mission, yeah, the, a few people died. It, it's sad. It's part of war. Okay, the, the country isn't going to spiral out of control and go crazy. Just look at some of the... The bad stuff that happens in the real world, you don't see the countries folded in on itself in sheer terror. So, I'm just going to put it at zero. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm going to save my core eye and eye. Yes, close it out. Close this out. All right, that is the gist of the changes I make to XCOM as, as far as the long war. But I did say I was going to explain... Oops, wrong one. A few of the lines to you just real quick now there are a lot of them so the fact there's just too many to uh, go over with you on what they do like this one here this is the starting stats for all civilians you know the people you rescue if you want to I mean you can go ahead and give them an ass amount of mobility or health I mean it'd be kind of cheating it's the same with your soldiers here you can alter the, you know, the character tanks, the sectoids, the alien floaters, thin men. You can adjust their starting stats and properties, will, sight radius, mobility. Just on all these first lines. That's what all of these in this entire long list here is for. And this here, this is the changes made in the various difficulties. Like this here, this is easy mode or normal. There's classic, brutal, and this is impossible. As you see, it's impossible. 
they all have bonuses to crit, including your civilian, I mean your soldiers, so that's kind of balanced out. There are a few things that I don't really care for, like the extra aim. That's probably the one thing I don't like is that's just basically making it harder just for the sake of being harder. This is the extra damage. You don't get extra damage, but the aliens get extra damage. That's another thing I don't like. If you want to balance it out, you can either set all these to zero. Or if you want to just make it easy, just look at all these numbers here. Find the average and give your soldiers a damage boost. Like put one or two, whichever you want. Uh, hit points, as you can see, a lot of the aliens have boosts and hit points. Now using health and damage merely as the increase factor to make the game harder, as I said before, is probably the worst way to manage a difficulty. But a long word goes a step beyond that, of course, with all the other changes. So if you want, I mean, you could actually just cut and paste. Say you want to go with, uh, not with easy, like with classic, just how everything is, for the most part, pretty balanced. You can just go down to impossible and paste it right over this and bam, then you have the settings as far as damage and hit points go more equalized between the aliens and yourself. And then of course all this goes down to upgrades. I would leave pretty much all this alone, if, especially if you don't know exactly what you're doing. It's the same with uh, the character classes. I mean on level up you can make it that soldiers gain based on their class X amount of health. See right here. So we have the engineer class. This is how much health and aim and will per level up at the first rank at squatty that they get. <coughs> how, about, how this basically is, is that for health, you have 70% chance to get one health. The breakdown of all this is actually pretty, pretty easy. Right, to give you a breakdown, just to be accurate for, for sure, if you want to ever adjust anything like this, is that we'll use this as an example. In the IHP, if you have the um, second wave option enabled for the hidden potential, you have 70% chance to gain one health. If you don't have that option enabled, then you by default have one health at this level up period. And for aim, it, it kind of works the same way. Aim and will have the same formula, but it is a bit different. See, in this one right here, it means that um, you get three aim without the second wave option enabled. That's what you get by default at that level up. But if you do have the second wave hidden potential enabled, what that, this is is that you have um, you have one plus random five chance of to get your your aim. So basically, you have one plus one to five so you could get as low as two which is lower than what you would get without second wave but you can get as high as six which is double what the second wave offers and this works exactly the same way it's five by default if you don't have second wave if you do then it's two plus random eight so it could be as low as three or as high as ten which again is double the potential of the default second wave and this is done per rank. So it's actually pretty easy to understand once you get the formula down. Now here you can adjust the weight for the soldiers that you receive in XCOM. Like the United States by default offers the most amount of soldiers. Now this all, you can change these numbers to anything and it automatically adjusts. If you just want a titanic amount of American versus any other class, you can just start throwing zeros in on there. It really don't matter. And a lot of these on the side here are listed of exactly what they do for Long War. This list here. Don't really pay attention to what this text says because it sometimes won't make any sense to compare to what it does. But yeah, that's the stuff you could do. I'm not going to save it. That's just various changes you can make to the INI file itself. If you have any more questions about how to do this, just post them below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. This was a pretty quick video overall how to do everything. So if at any point you were confused, just let me know and I'll try to clarify for you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and join my community. Alright guys, this is Talem and I will see you later.